Resin 3D printing can seem extremely complicated. But what if I told you that in just 12 minutes you will know exactly how to print high quality crisp miniatures without the frustration. In this video I won't go into much detail on why I do things as I do. It will more just be showing my workflow of how I print miniatures and I'm going to describe it as quickly as I can. My resin 3D printer is in my well ventilated stable temperature printing space. It has some leftover resin in the vat from the last time but other than that there should be no debris in the vat and there's nothing on the build plate because I checked it last time I printed to make sure it was ready to go. I also know that my printer is well calibrated with the resin I'm using, the printer and the temperatures in the room. Right now I am using Amerilite's TGM7 mainly because it's tough and flexible out of the box and just works very great. Also expensive. I load up my mini factory because this is where I can easily browse my extremely bloated uh, collection of miniature files. I download the miniatures I want on my print right now. These are all pre-supported files from various creators I like. Most of them I know are pre-supported pretty good. I load the files into the slicer. In this case I use Lightsheet on my PC. I use the auto range feature in Lightsheet and again I'm amazed at how bad a job it actually does. Please let's get some AI crap in here to make it better. I then manually and painstakingly play Tetris with the files for a bit and because I'm lazy I end up just deleting a few models and not printing them right now. I set the anti-aliasing settings and I export in the correct format. First I export it to my PC and then to the thumb drive. I use a thumb drive that I bought and not the crappy one because it corrupts your files. I make a note of how much resin the slicer estimates that I need for the print. Most of the time I remember to unplug the USB drive correctly. Then I go to printing. I go to the entrance of my printing space and I put on my mask with my organic filter, my gloves. My safety glasses are not that relevant right now because I'm just gonna go in and hit print. I go to the printer, open it up and I check the vat with my silicone spatula for any debris or bumps in the FEP. I also glance at the build plate just to make sure there's nothing left over that will smash down in the screen. I kinda eyeball how much resin is left in the vat or I check the indicator on the tank to see if I need to pour in some more. Stir the resin in the vat to make sure it's not separated as this can quickly cause a fail. If I need more resin in the vat I shake the resin in the bottle very well and stir it very well with the resin in the vat. I also make sure that the resin I pour in matches the temperatures of the resin in the vat. I load the file into the printer and I hit print. If I'm not in a hurry or if I'm a bit nervous about this print for some reason I will stay and listen for the sound of the print separating from the FEP. This way I have some indication that things are sticking to the build plate and that they are lifting from the FEP and the print is going great. Often my printing will happen on one night so I come back the day after maybe three five hours after the print is done. Most of the time the print will then have ample time to leak extra liquid resin off of the build plate and the model. I'm not in a hurry here unless I'm using a water washable resin I can leave it there for a very long time days weeks. When I go in I put on my mask, nitrile gloves and safety glasses. If I am in a hurry and I get to the printer white when it's finished I need to get some of the resin off the build plate so I might angle it and hang it from a 3D printed thing do. While the build plate and models might have stopped dripping resin as soon as you change the angle of the build plate it will start to drip resin again. If you're using a very low viscosity brittle resin it will quickly drip when you angle the build plate. But if you're using a high quality high viscosity resin you have a bit more time before the resin starts to drip. Before I do anything else I make sure that my cleaning space is ready and the tools are ready. This means light and no clutter. Then I open up the printer, I detach the build plate from the printer and then I carry the build plate without changing the angle over to my cleaning station. This is to avoid spilling resin when I move it. Then I lay the build plate down on the side onto my cleaning mat. If there is a chance of sunlight hitting my printer I go back to the printer and quickly put the UV cover on. Then I angle the build plate so I can put force on it without throwing it out of angle so you need to level it again. But in most cases because I've dialed in my burning 
layer's exposure time, I need to use very little force to get my prints off. Then I simply take my sharp plastic razor and slide it on that print, apply a bit of force and a tap, and off it goes. I try to make sure the models land on my silicone tray, uh, but sometimes they can jump around a bit. As long as you don't get anything in your eyes, you're good. If the prints are for some reason stuck very well to the build plate, I might apply a bit of heat with a hairdryer or heat gun to get them off easier, but not a lot of heat. Once all of the prints are off, I wipe down the build plate quickly with some paper towel, just to make sure there's no cured resin on it, as that could potentially tear my FEP on my next print. Then I angle the build plate as it would be in the printer, I take it over there and I put it in. This is to avoid any more liquid resin getting off it. I attach it to the printer again and I make sure it's firmly attached and ready to go. While I am there, I also check the vat with my silicone spatula for any debris or defects. If in the process of removing the models from the build plate, I saw any kind of fails or defects, I will be extremely diligent in this step. Right now, I am trying to make sure that the printer is truly ready to print the next time I need to print. Because if I don't do it now, I might forget and ruin the next print or break my screen. I wipe down the silicone spatula with the paper towel I used before. And if it can handle a bit more resin, I might wipe down all of the liquid resin we got from the build plate. That paper towel now goes to the side for waste removal later. Now I have a bunch of models with liquid resin on them and supports on them. Both of these things I want to remove. This stage can go two ways. For water washing, I have a very specific method you can see in this video. For normal types of resin, this is how I would do it. I have two jars of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Both jars have a strainer system, so it's easier to move the models up and down and get them out. I gently peel off the supports from the model with my hands. No tools are required here, and because the resin and printer are calibrated very well, this should be very easy. The support should leave extremely minor defects, if anything at all, so you shouldn't get the small bumps. If the supports are poorly made, they might leave some scarring on my models and they can be harder to remove. If the supports are really, really hard, I might need to apply a bit of heat, but be careful. Heat makes it more flexible and easier to get off. Over time, when you do this, you will get into a rhythm of how much force you can apply when taking off supports. What you want to avoid is taking off an arm or a leg here or there. If there are a lot of supports, you might need to gently break off the connection between the model and the supports, as that will make it much easier to rip off. Bigger models are often harder to move supports on, so if you're just starting out, try some smaller models first. Every time I'm done with removing supports on a model, I plump it down into what I call my dirty jar. This is the jar with alcohol in it where models hit first and that alcohol in there, it will be extremely diluted liquid resin. Once the dirty jar is full of models without support, I will dunk them a bit up and down with the strainer and then I will move them all into the less dirty jar of alcohol. The supports I simply set aside for later waste removal. I'm left with two jars filled with models. I strain the models a bit and make sure each of them hit the dirty jar and then the not so dirty jar. Then I put my washing cure bin in a position where I can easily plop the models down in it. At the end, all of the models go into that bin, but I make sure none of them are sticking out and I make sure I don't put anything in that is so small it will fall through the cracks. I hit about 10 minutes on that wash station and then it goes. Now I'm standing there, I have something running for 10 minutes and I have my resin protective gear on. In these 10 minutes, I can do some cleaning up. First of all, I will take some paper towels and wipe any spills off my tray. I will take on my fancy protective UV glasses and hit everything with my UV fast light. All of the supports I put in my curing chamber and I give them a good 15 to 20 minute spin. In the end, all of this resin waste will go into a clear plastic bag in my bin. Once that's full, I will hang that in sunlight for some days. Once the models in the wash station are done, I put them on a paper towel to dry off. While alcohol can evaporate very quickly in a matter of minutes, I often leave them there for 
the next day. That's just how I do it. Once they are completely dry, I put them in the curing chamber and give them 10 to 15 minutes depending. You might hear people talk about over curing resin in the States, but it seems like a myth. Once the models are cured, they are non-sticky. If they're still sticky, I just cure them some more. Remember that in your curing process, your models will warp a bit. So if I have something that needs to be glued together very tightly with tight joints, I might do it before curing. I will very often leave prints after curing for several days. This gives the resin time to settle. There might be some leftover support bits here or there or something on the models I need to take off. And then I simply prime and paint the miniatures. While I've cleaned my cleaning station pretty good and gotten rid of the waste in a sensible way, there's still the issue of the alcohol. Over time, the dirty jar will get really, really dirty with liquid resin to a point where the alcohol becomes very inefficient at cleaning resin off. Once I feel like it's so gunky that it's not really working well, I place that jar outside in the sun without the lid. I want a cover on it to not get rainwater in it, but overall I want to evaporate the alcohol and I want sunlight to hit the leftover resin to cure it as much as I can. In most cases I get the sludge weird leftover but sometimes I can get it to dry so much it just becomes flaky old resin gunk. Then that goes in the trash or at the facility for waste removal. You might think trying to distill the alcohol is a great solution and you might have success doing it. I have not found that to be very efficient and the payoff is so minor I don't think it's worth the effort. The worst time comes when the wash station gets so much liquid resin it will settle down below and it will start to clog the fan and the motor. Then you have to clean that thing. Because of this I know a lot of people that completely swear off the spinning of the fan and just use the this as a glorified big container with alcohol in it. This was my very quick workflow of how I print. If you want to know why I do it this way and more details about it, you can find everything in my printing course for beginners. That course is right now in early bird pricing and it comes bundled with a lot of miniatures you can print. Or you can just check out this video about what I think you should consider when buying a recent 3D printer.